I'm a rich man, baby. How long has I been loving you? Well, it's about six o'clock in the morning and we have slept in. The sun is starting to come up. We were supposed to be up at about five, I think. We hunted last night till I think we got home around three. So I'm a bit blurry eyed now, a bit tired. Um, we pulled out all the stops last night. We had the fire yesterday which slowed us down a bit and then uh, last night we even pulled out Brenton's famed blue boar jersey and it didn't work. We didn't catch one. Today is uh, cool. I think it's supposed to be around 27 for the day, whereas the other couple of days have been up around 40. So it's quite a bit cooler, so I've broken out the beanie and we're gonna hunt daytime. So I think we head out now, which probably get to our hunting about seven. And then um, I'm not sure, we may go all day. We'll just see how we go. So big day ahead. I don't even think the uh, boar jersey, I think it's been retired. But we've got all the hope in the world. It's some good hunting here. I've, I've had a blast already. It's just um, the fire put us out a little bit yesterday, and that's actually speaking of fires being put out, that's gone. So it wasn't as bad as we thought it was, as bad as it could have been. So Brenton was fighting that yesterday, and today is set aside for boar slaying. Back in the West, we figured, why change a plan that's worked well already? And we were scouting around the same property as on day one. We sent Ryan on a small trek. I refused because it was too cold. Can you take him with you? Yeah, you up then. Uh. That's why I take people hunting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Open gates and walk the hard stuff. Yeah. He's a bit more experienced, so he took some convincing, didn't he? <laughs> oh, do I have to open the gate now? No, I'm good. Next, Brenton pulled up at some wallows he knew of, and for the first time, but not the last on this trip, I found myself saying, this is the most pig sign I've ever seen. See that pile, that pile of mud at the bottom? That's from all the rubbish. Pigs from, yeah. yeah, just constant rubbing on it. I don't know if it was the colour of the mud that made it stand out more or what, but almost everything that a pig could rub up against here, one had. From trees, to rocks, to logs on the ground. It was crazy, but we couldn't find a pig. So we checked more properties, more hotspots, saw more pig damage, but still, we remained pigless. Things were starting to get desperate, to the point we were starting to make pigs out of everything. You need something, isn't it? Not shape. I don't know. I don't know if they're walking now. Yeah, I don't know if it's lambs or not. That one was big, but... Finally, the dogs jumped, and jumped some more, and got a little one. More little ones ran out, but we were moving to yet another block. It had been five hours driving now, for just that one. But the next spot was looking promising, with a lot of sign around where a boar had been tusking the trees. Just the tusk marks? Yeah, the tusk marks. I mentioned earlier the scent glands in a pig's front legs. They also have one above their tusks, which is why they rub up against trees and branches like they do. Another way of leaving scent behind. I guess it's a bit like when a cat rubs its mouth against you. All signs say boar, do they? Oh. <laughs> Now there may be other reasons, but this is definitely one, and a big dominant boar likes to make his presence in an area known. So, with all this tree damage, our spirits were lifted. More rubbing on those trees back there. Yeah. More trees marked, and then we spotted a good pad heading in and out of the crop. That is a goodie, isn't it? There were more pads and a lot of damage in the crop we could see now. We were closing in. It's getting smashed, isn't it? And then, with my eyes working a bit better in Western Australia than they were in the Cape, I spotted one out on the edge of a dam. That's a good pig, eh? Big boar. Hey, 
Yeah. Yeah. Another one, that. that's a better one, boy. yeah. You're not allowed in there? I am, if I reach, I'll get permission, yeah. I'll be in there a few times. So where would they be hitting now? They'd think? be going back in that crop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like shooting ducks on the water, isn't it? Too easy. I was waiting for the rest of the modern coming up this was. Two good balls. Better than a mob. So then, with all the casualness in the world, we carried on, with me on the tray looking back to where two big balls were, and forward to where we were going in the opposite direction, feeling a little confused. Well that's a strange feeling but kind of a good one. We've just spotted two balls out in this crop out here and we've driven away from them. Um, the boys don't seem too worried, thinking they don't think they're going to get away but Couch is just going to ring because he's allowed in there but we haven't asked if we could be in there today so we're just going to walk up. There's a, there's a little uh, sort of a creek coming up here and there's a lot of sign on the tree so we're going to walk up that first and uh, then see if he can get on that other block and then we'll go back and hit that. But um, yeah, it is strange to see, they look fairly decent balls, and um, yeah, we've just want moseyed off, and then we'll mosey back in there if we're allowed and go and catch them. It seems like, yeah, they're fairly confident that they'll still be there. So, yeah, strange feeling, but a good one, because even if we don't catch anything here, we still know there's a couple of good balls over there. Happy days. You're pretty relaxed about the two balls back there? They're, they go, they're there and they're gonna stay there? They're not going anywhere. Okay. Now. It's, a, it's a luxury. So we set off on our walk, and for the second time in the day, I found myself saying, I think this is the most pig sign I've ever seen. So much so that I've got our whole walk sped up here so you can see it all. Well, I was impressed anyway. Right from the get-go, there was sign, and it just didn't stop. That's not old, that sign there. Yeah. Good, good pig too. We had Jake on a lead and both dogs were showing a bit of interest. Nothing that screamed that there was a pig right here, but with these rushes, as we'd seen, they could easily have been. Can you see this one? Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Wait, that's just about the biggest ball mark I've seen. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a good look at it? It's a monster. I was getting really excited, but Ryan wasn't buying into it. I even started pulling out predictions. See that tree just underneath, and those reeds underneath it, there's a bit of a tunnel there. Yeah. That's where this monster is. It'd be really easy not to get wind out of here too, though, eh? You know, if they're tucked, yeah. tucked in and this stuff. Yeah, all right. Not does it.
Right. Yeah. We've just fallen into a pig pen. Yeah. And the pigs have all fallen out. But they're here somewhere, eh? Beds there. Yeah. Yeah. I got the top there. And on it went. Pig pads, digging, trees ripped up, mud everywhere, beds, and eventually the inevitable happened. Jazz put her nose up and trotted forward. Roy showed up to lend a hand and while Ryan was taking care of that, Brenton called Roy back and set him and Champ onto the boar that had shot out. They pulled him up before he'd made it to the crop and Ryan's dogs joined in once he'd got them off the first peak. One was sitting right next to the other one, just sitting there. Yeah. Mate, I reckon that was one of the biggest marks I've ever seen in there. True. Yeah, it's the granddaddy of all bull Goliath. We've named him. Well, there's still two more, at least down there. Yeah. All right. We haven't made up for the rest of the morning. So all good to go in there? Yeah, yeah, we're just gonna walk it back. You got a plan? Oh, not really. <laughs> so with our first ball for the day and permission to proceed granted, we loaded up the dogs and got high tech on it. We gotta get some reception up at Google Earth. Just making plans. <laughs> the modern day hunter. <laughs> You're gonna walk to that dam. Yeah. And then I'm gonna come around behind that wet spot and we'll meet up there. We have two ways. And ten balls. Hopefully. Grab all that shit. Let's get them. We need two of you to follow both of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See so that contour will follow that yeah. all the way to the dam. Yeah. That corner is where that wet pack is just in over here. So, so you'll end up on just on the outside of the scrub over there. Yeah, I'll be over here. Yeah. Plan laid out, we set out walking with more damage evident in the crop and Jazz looking keen almost straight away. Sent it, right? <laughs> when Jake started pulling on the rope, we knew we were getting close. It was just a little too soon for where we'd spotted the big fellas. And 
And right on cue, we spotted another. On the same dam, we'd seen the others. Oh, he's a goodie too, isn't he? Jazz by now had woken one up, but it was not the one we were wanting. We don't want that one. Jazz, no, Jazz, no, come here. Luckily, she listened when Ryan called her off, because we had bigger fish to fry. Jake was now rearing to go, and as we drew on and where we'd seen the boars, yet another one stood up, and he was a cracker. As I'd stopped running to film the action, Ryan had got a head start on me and I was playing catch up. By the time I got to the dam's edge, the dogs were already battling. We'd seen a couple of others as we ran in, so although we were pretty stoked with what we'd got, we were keen to get the dogs off again. Thankfully, Ryan's dogs listened to me, and we fired them back into the crop. Oh, there's one over there. I got another quick look at one before heading back to have a look at the one we'd just caught. That's a good boy, eh? That's a good boy. We got on the two-way to update Brenton, and then it was on again. Oh, he's scrapping. Whoa! Mate, he's a cracker. He is a big fella. I thought my number was up, but he made a dash for it before the dogs pulled him up again. Oh, he's here. He got him. Oh. The hard part about filming is you want to get the action. If you're running, you can't get it, so you toss up between running or filming. The dogs to me at this point looked as though they'd lost this pee, so I tried to stop and film in case they hit him up again. Do you see him? I couldn't see what was going on, so I was trying to get Ryan's take on it, but he couldn't hear me. And then he was running. Are they on, Ryan? Yeah, I thought he was going to have a crack at us. Yeah. I think he would have if he had a chance. Yeah. Mate. The dogs. Woo! They're dead. Good dogs. Mate, that was awesome, wasn't it? That was good, eh? You there, catcher? Catcher. Come to the dam, we've got both of them. 
pro dogs on got there. Yeah, I'm a big slave boy. Yeah, boy, hook it up. <laughs> you got another one down the bottom there, eh? Oh, I could have. Oh, right on. Jay's here. Mate, that, that two crackers. True. Yeah. The, the, the first one was a cracker, yeah. second one was even bigger. Yeah, Boy, the first one, walking in. You gotta be 100. Easy, Easy eh? I reckon. The other guy's another big color. Oh, that one easy to go over 100. Yeah. We're not quite as big as I remember him, but he's still good kid. Yeah, we were a bit excited. Yeah. <laughs> Should be 100, but yeah. Easy. Yeah. The other one's bought straight behind the dam, so I don't know what's easiest. So. I'll say we dragged the first one to the ute, but I was really just watching. Then, when they went and got the second, I filmed a bit of damage in the crop before throwing them over my shoulders for old time's sake. Oops, sorry. Right. Oh, sorry. Ready? Yeah. Right, camera time, quick before I do die. <laughs> That pig is mud, fatto. Yeah. Pig blood's probably not good for you, is it? Um, you're right. <laughs> right, I'm off. Just drop him there, Carlos, we'll reverse the union. And just like that, we had our cover shot. So we got that one, then that one, then that one. Yeah, doesn't get much better. Nah, nah, that is a cracking day, isn't it? Halfway through. Yeah. I'm, I'm good luck, I tell you. <laughs> Going way, am I? Yep. <laughs> and so that's the dam that was at the centre of one of the best days of hunting I've ever had. And there's been plenty of good ones. Now we just had to weigh them. What's your call on this one? Okay. What's your call on this one? 68. We started with the smallest and worked our way up. I was gonna go 75 too and I would have beat you, I'd yeah. be closer. <laughs> oh, I said 75. So and that's a shadow of a peak to those ones. Yeah. What do we got on this one? Right, so I was. I was 112, wasn't I? On the other one. Yeah, so now I've got to go smaller. 108. I reckon I'm closest. 108. 108, hey, 108. <laughs> so, 116, 115, 112. Yeah. Yeah. 150 days. Oh, <laughs> hey, well, it was your day. We'll give you that one. Yeah. Same little, I reckon. Yeah. Brothers. Yeah. Back on the Cape, we were waiting on the next lot of hunters to turn up with their dogs, and we're actually out to see if we could fluke finding my phone. But really, this is just a look at why Bud prefers hunting later in the day. We saw a few pigs along the side of the road, but there was just no telling where they'd be. Whereas in the heat, you knew right where they were going to be, and you can drive right up to them. Really, it's just too hot to be making the dogs find them. You'd cook them in no time. But after all that, we didn't find my phone, and had a bit of a medical emergency and had to dash back to civilization. Despite that, it had been a great trip for me, and I went home happy, thanks to all involved.
Back in the west, we thought about retiring after our last day hunting, but came out of hiding the next day. Well, because that's what we do. We hunt peaks. We were heading back to a spot we'd gone to a couple of nights earlier, where we'd spotted a mob. Holy That thing's enough. Yeah, it's big. Mate, you get a good wall. There you go, get over that thing now. Oh, holy yeah. Up to the right there, yeah, yeah, yeah. But after getting stuck behind a flock of sheep, we sent the dogs, but in the ensuing madness, forgot the tracker and the two ways, lost the dogs, and came up empty handed. We had no idea which way the pigs had run, so were scouting around the area trying to find a pig pad or some sign. It was a good sized mob that had just vanished, but they can't have vanished without a trace, surely. They're just driving the fence trying to see where they're coming through. Yeah. So here we were on the last lap with the Kelpie on the tray checking the fences for any sign of where the mob may have come under the fence. As we came alongside a patch of bulrushes, the kelpie perked up a little. Even Champ sat up from resting. All positive signs. So we pulled up and had a quick look about. There were tunnels all through the rushes and old sign, but Roy seemed pretty keen on heading over into the next valley, so we loaded up and followed his lead. Pretty keen, eh? Yeah, real keen. We sat on the hill to see if we could see anything run out, and then we got what we wanted, that first bark. Yeah. After the bark, there was a fair bit of commotion before Roy came right out of the reeds. <laughs> he was bouncing, trying to get a look, and when we got down in there, it was easy to see why. Looks pretty thick in that little bit. But for now, we were lounging back, waiting for him to open up again. There's a fair bit of racket, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah. It was a fair bit of racket. Yeah, there's more in there. Oh, there's one coming out the back there. Look. That's better. Yeah. That was better. Brenton let Champ out to lend a hand, and we made our way down to the rushes, which now looked a lot bigger than they had from a distance. By the time we'd got down there, it had gone quiet again, except for the odd crashing about in the rushes. Right over the other side. When Champ was barking, we figured we had a good one on our hands. Getting to him wasn't easy though. You good, eh? Hey, really good pig eyes, you? Yeah, good pig eyes. I got stabbed in the eye, up the nose, we jumped, crawled, and waded through like we were in chest high water, and then when we got right to them, couldn't see a thing. Alright, 
Nice, Got one of those spikes up my nose. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> more, yeah. more in here. We eventually got to them and Brenton got hold. But we were pretty sure there were still more in the rushes. I didn't realise quite how many more though. Yeah, he was a scrapper. Yeah. Part of the dogs there, eh? Yeah. Maybe 70. Maybe 75, 80. Easy, I reckon. Yeah. Good peg. Let Jake go, you'll probably get another one in here. You reckon this will be that mob that we chased? We saw the other night. Yeah. I reckon. We waded our way back out and headed back to the ute to get the dogs a drink when one must have decided he'd lain still long enough and it was time to gap it. Right in front of us. We set off after the dogs who had the ball caught, then decided we may as well run to the ute and drive up. We call it working smarter rather than harder, I think the general term is being lazy. And it seemed more pigs had taken this one's lead and started busting out, all from the same patch we'd just been standing in the middle you of. You know the good one too. And some good ones. I got him. Hey. Another one over there. Do I go for Woody on one or not? That's the big one up there, eh? Yeah. That one has the good catch still. Yeah. Because we thought we'd finished hunting, we had all the dogs loose, and so we hadn't got too far. We probably could have ran up and got there quicker. We got the dogs back in the crate quickly as even more pigs came out of the rushes, most of them looking like decent boars. You see any more? Yeah. Three. Oh, I reckon that first one that went up was the yeah. bigger one. There's another one, look. Oh, there's another one way up there too. Right out the back. The first one we'd seen head up the hill still looked like the best to us, so we raced over in his direction. On our way across, another two busted out. This is out of a patch we'd ran through, stood in for probably half an hour yelling and talking, and they just sat. If they'd kept sitting, they'd have had a better day than they were about to, because they were both good boars. Champ dusted off the first one on his own, and then the bully greys ran down the other. The day just kept getting better. And better. As Brenton ran up to grab this boar, the boar was thinking of doing the same thing to him. He kept coming, dragging Champ the whole way, and I thought he might jump straight in the front seat of the ewe. Like <laughs> he 
He squared up beside the ewe and Brenton grabbed hold of him. Ryan had the other one under control and on that note we ended part one of my first ever West Australian trip. And I had had a blast. <laughs>